SC physics exercises and we're up to three phase power and AC circuits number 11. So let's look at our first problem. A three phase 66 kV line voltage transformer supplies 800 kilowatt balance three phase load at 8.8 .8 power factor lagging. Determine the line current supplied by the transformer. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing that? So the first thing we need to note is the transformers are rated in VA for worst case. So that's the apparent power, isn't it? Transformers are rated in apparent power because that's the worst possible case. So we know that the true power is, they've told us the true power at 800 kilowatts. And one way to determine the apparent power is we know that the true power, if we divide it by the power factor, will give us the apparent power. So we know we've got 800 kilowatts divided by 0.8 is going to give you 1 million or 1 mega VA. But that's not the end of the problem. We also wanted the current. We also know that apparent power is equal to the volts times the current. If you remember, there's the units, volts times amps. So we can rearrange that formula and we get VA. Sorry, the current is equal to the VA divided by the voltage line which they've given us. So our 1 MVA divided by 66 kV and you'll find that comes out at 15.15 amps. So 11.2 now, we have to calculate the power factor for a system using a 2 watt meter method. And they tell us that the watt meter 1 is 12 kilowatts and watt meter 2 is 15. Also determine the total power consumed by the system. Well, let's do the second one first because it's nice and easy. With a 2 watt meter method, W1 plus W2 is the total power. So 12 plus our 15 gives us 27 kilowatts. Don't forget to put the kilowatts on the end. 27 is only half the answer. So it's 27 kilowatts. So next we need to recognize that we need this special formula. And the formula gives us the tan of the angle. So the tan of the angle is root 3 times W1 minus W2 divided by W2 plus W1. So we're going to divide these two values and then take the root 3 of it and it gives us the tan. So we simply take 15 minus 12 and we divide it by 15 plus 12. That's going to give us the tan of the angle root 3 times 111 equals 0.192. Of course, that's nice to have the ratio for the tan, but what we really need is the angle. So tan to the minus 1 tells us that it's 10.89 degrees. And then finally, we want to get that back into the power factor. So we want the cos of the angle. So the power factor is the cos of 10.89, which is 0 0.982. So our final answer is 0 0.982. That's the power factor and it's just a ratio so it doesn't have any units. 11.3. A three phase balance load requires 4 MVA of power when operating at 0.55 lags. So that's 4 mega VA connected to an 11 kV 50 hertz three phase supply. We want to determine A the three phase K bar rating of a capacitor per phase of a star connected capacitor bank that would improve the power factor from or from of two, I should say two, zero point nine. So we have a power factor of 0.55 and we want to improve it to 0.9. The line current before and after the improvement of the power factor. So there's two ways to do this. Uh, we can do it by doing a really carefully well-scaled and accurate phasor diagram. And we can also do it using a bit of trigonometry and Pythagoras. And as we go, I'll explain both. 
So you can see here, I've simply said our scale is 50 amps equals 10 millimeters. And because we're dealing with currents, our reference is the voltage. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in that 40 MVA at 0.55 power factor. So all I've done is simply take the 0.55, gone cos to the minus 1, and it tells me it's 56 degrees. So there's my 56 degrees, and if you remember, it uh, also told us it was lagging. So don't forget, it said lagging. So there's my 56 degrees and my direction of rotation anti-clockwise, making that lagging. So the next step is to put in the phaser at the point 0.9 where we'd like to get to. So we would like to get this phaser up to that position. So we want to reduce this angle here to this angle in here. Now at the moment we don't know how long this phaser will have to be. We don't know. So we simply project it out at the 26 degrees, nice and long, it doesn't matter how long. In actual fact as long as it goes past this point here. We'll see why in a moment. So the next step is this is the current, this green phaser is the current that we need to achieve to get the red phaser up to the same position as the blue phaser. But again, we don't know exactly how long it is. You can scale at this point. You can actually take our scale. So I'll get the pen out. We can take that scale and we can measure what that is, and you can see it's one, two, three, just under four. So it's going to be just under 200 amps, isn't it? So let's say our estimate at the moment is 200 amps. But we can actually use some trigonometry and work it out a bit more accurately. And we can have this big triangle, you can see here, formed by the purple on one side, or the hot pink on one side, the red and the blue, that's one big triangle. Another triangle is formed by the black side here, the blue on this side, and the hypotenuse of this phaser. So knowing those triangles, we can do some calcs. We can actually calc the length of this triangle here. And the length of this one is 203 amps. Calcs out that simply by taking the cos of 56 multiplied by 364. So our 364 here, we're multiplying it by that angle and we're working out this side of the triangle. Our next step is to take the sine of the angle, and I've done it in this magenta color. So we're doing the big magenta phaser now. And Again, we take the sine of the angle, so 56, 364 from over here, and we now know this one is 301 amps long. Next thing we can do is we can calculate this black one. And we can calculate him because we can take the angle of our 25, 26 degrees in here, this and the tan, so we're using the opposite and the adjacent, and this angle, so I can take the tan, and it tells us it's 94.6 amps in length. Finally, we can just subtract the two. So if we take our 94 and subtract it from 103, it tells us we've got 207 amps of reactive power. Do you remember we scaled it off and we said it was somewhere around about 200 amps? Well, when we use our Pythagoras and our trigonometry, it actually comes out to exactly 207 amps and so you can do it with both a phaser diagram and you can do it with trigonometry. And I wonder how many MVR are required to uh, for the capacitance. You simply take the 207 amps 
multiply it by our 11,000 volts, our 11 kV, and we're going to need 2.27 MVR or megavar to do that power factor correction. So that's the end of three phase power.